Hello, my name is Pastiage and welcome to my perspective on Dead Cells. Firstly, I'd like to talk about what Dead Cells is. Dead Cells is a rogue fania that seemingly takes inspiration from games such as Rogue Legacy and Dark Souls. Why do I think that this game takes inspiration from these games? First off, I'd like to talk about how it takes inspiration from Rogue Legacy. In Rogue Legacy, you had a big mansion that you could upgrade after obtaining gold in the dungeon. And it slowly caused you to gain more and more upgrades. In this game, you do similar things. Upon killing enemies, you have a chance to obtain a soul. With these souls, you can unlock permanent upgrades. These permanent unlocks range anywhere from more potion charges to simply unlocking weapons that will appear in the game at random. There is also an upgrade that will randomize the weapons that you have unlocked at the start of the game, giving you an extra power boost at the start. Also, like Rogue Legacy, there is a mechanic where you have a small staging area before diving right back into the game. Now, why does this game also take inspiration from Dark Souls? You may have already guessed, uh, guessed it as I discussed this briefly in my previous point, but you collect souls that you can use to upgrade your character. And when you die, you lose all your souls. However, you can't retrieve your souls at the location you died. I imagine the devs would like to have this same mechanic in the game, but it uh, doesn't really fit in the rogue genre. Another way this game takes inspiration from Dark Souls is that you have a limited number of potions that you get to refill every now and then. This is of course comparable to the Estus flasks you have in Dark Souls. Another Dark Souls inspiration is the dodge rolling. Dodge rolling, while not exclusive to Dark Souls, is still a very common mechanic in those games. Secondly, let's talk about the other mechanics in the game that I have not talked about yet. There is also gold in the game. Gold in the game is used to buy from merchants or to unlock some golden doors that have a monetary price attached to them. Upon death, you lose a percentage of gold. The percentage is decided by the current upgrade level of the relevant skill to this. Like I've said before, in this game you will unlock weapons using souls, and these weapons will start appearing randomly inside of the game. On a side note, you will also be able to upgrade the same weapons using souls. Alongside these weapons, you also have skills that work in the same way, but occupy different slots, namely the Q&E keys. The weapons and skills you will find throughout the game will also have a chance to contain some random power-ups. With them, for instance, a throwing dive, I had the ability to throw a grenade, while I also threw the knife. And I had twin daggers that would deal 100% more damage, but it also would give you 100% more damage, which usually ends up killing me. In order to get more weapons, you will have to kill enemies, when the, sometimes an enemy will randomly drop a blueprint. These blueprints will contain a weapon, which when unlocked will start appearing in the game. You will also unlock passives in the game. I unlocked the first one by beating an elite enemy in the Ramparts level, where when I beat him I gain the ability to call forth a vine from a puddle on the floor. This also expanded my levels a bit because now that mechanic would start showing up and I could use it. Now let's talk about level design. All levels are randomly generated, however they don't have a real random generation feel to them. There, while well, there are just rooms that you will generally see again, it doesn't really feel like they don't belong. There's definitely some, co some cohesion here. In the levels you will find teleporters. These teleporters allow you to quickly move between different parts of the level. You will also find upgrade scrolls. These scrolls will sometimes allow you to pick between a health, weapon or skill upgrade. However, sometimes the scroll will have an upgraded will have an upgrade predetermined. The game also has glyphs in the, that will be hidden inside of a wall. And when you hit them enough, they will break open and they will reveal a gem. Or sometimes there is a carrot inside of it that will recover some health. These same glyphs are also located on the floor. You can't hit them, but if a player stands near, the, near them and use the activate button, which is R on the keyboard, it will open a portal to, an, to a hidden area which will have a challenge, which usually revolves around you not getting hit and getting towards the other side or killing all enemies while not getting hit. 
Levels can also contain chests, which will give you an item upon opening them. However, there's also a corrupted chest. When you open these, you will get more items than normal, except you will also be cursed, and the only way to lift this curse is by killing 10 enemies. You might wonder what this curse does. Well, the curse I've only gotten so far, I don't know if there is more, but this curse, it curses you, and if you get hit, you just die. Now let's have a quick little look at the aesthetics of the game. The sprite work is well done, but not anything all too special. There is a clear difference between enemies and inanimate objects, and when you see a weapon you will be able to envision what that weapon is supposed to do. Like a big sword feels more heavy and will require more swings, while the smaller swords will be easier to hit and tick a little bit faster. Levels will contain different side tile sets, like we've just encountered the sewer level and the ramparts level. Levels uh, always feel very different. All, their, you know, all the sprites used in them are very unique, and it really gives you the impression that you're not just grinding through the same areas. The gameplay mechanics in this game feel fluid and responsive. The game recommends you to use a controller. However, I've only played with a keyboard and have not had any issues in terms of controls. So the game is perfectly playable with a keyboard. Rolling will move you past enemies, but sometimes it will feel a bit iffy when you try to roll through an enemy. At first the mouse would not constrain to the window, but in an update they changed this and I've not had an issue with the mouse ever since. The weapons all have different speeds attached to them causing some confusion upon swapping to a new weapon. However, this makes the weapons feel unique. The skills that you can use in the game are generally strong and really not there for filler. For instance, the turret feels a little bit too strong at the moment. There's also this move that I can only describe as a Goomba stomp, where when you press down while in the air, you will perform some sort of stomp that will deal massive damage to enemies all around. Maybe a little bit too strong though, as it deals quite a lot of damage. Enemies can also be very difficult. The early ones may not seem like much, but after the first boss I encountered an area where the enemies would just stun lock me and I'd die instantly. If this is a sign of things to come, then this game has definitely got a high learning curve to it. Concluding, for a game that is about to hit early access, it really seems like developers care a lot about this game. It already feels really polished and has a lot to offer. If you decide to pick up uh, this game while it's in early access, you will have to get quite some fun out of this. But I do advise to wait for the game to actually release. As of now, there's a lot to do in the title, and I would recommend it if you enjoy Rogvania games. Anyhow, that's been it for me today. If you liked the video, make sure to give me a like. If you feel like I did not do my best, do not hesitate to smite me with that dislike button. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out with getting some pre-release keys. Anyhow, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.